take minutes until Erica arrives or I get a message from her to find out if it's us. Good. <clears throat> All right, so I call the meeting to order of the Longmont House Authority Advisory Board at 9 a.m. Talk about. Question, right. do I need some packets? I can have Andrea. That's right. You guys need Erica has packets. Um, let's see. We can have Andrea do it real quick. Yeah. Do you have the whole thing? Well, it's the whole, I mean, yeah. it's just, you know, one set. Yeah. So we get, oh, do you need this? Two. Well, no, no, I'm we saying for you. Copies. I'm fine here. Oh, oh okay. Oh, I should probably. Yeah. But do you want a copy? We can have Andrea come on real quick. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll listen. Here. Okay. So we'll put it right here. I just wanted to see what you're Well, obviously all members are present other than Lauren, the board, or the advisory board. Go to agenda two, approval of the minutes. Do I have a motion? Um, I will move to approve with the insertion of the word advisory under um, organization optics, the LHAB election schedule. Okay. Insert the word staff and advisory board okay. and move to approve. Okay. I will second that. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Let's go on to number three, public invited to be heard. I do not see anyone. Let's go on to number four, organizational updates. 4A is bylaws update. Okay, so I'll go ahead and take this one. Um, so these bylaws, Oh, she's, she's locked out. Erica's here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll just pause for a minute if you don't mind so we can get Lisa in a hurry. Yeah, you mm -hmm. bet. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> I know. Well, we took it seemed backwards, but I went around knowing that that was there. Oh, with the yeah, and here was the yeah, he texted. All right. So Erica, just so you know, we started, and I started taking notes. We're just starting at four A. So I'll just send in a couple of little things that I did so far. But we're gonna pause until we get. Right away. Just let us know when you're cool. okay. You're good? Okay. So, for the bylaws. So, um, you may recall we've been talking about the bylaws in the election basically every meeting for quite a while, getting everything squared away, but we really are there at this point. So, the bylaws uh, updates that you see do two things. The section uh, four, removal of commissioner, and the new section two, vacancies, um, and the, the, the removed section above. Really, this was um, prompted by Council Member Martin, who, when we brought the last bylaws update that were really just changing the advisory board from five to seven members, she said, what about this? So. Um, that's this is the city attorney's office wrote this up to make sure that everything with the commissioner's terms was um, in lockstep with the council terms. And then I do uh, have a question on the officers. Mm -hmm. um, so are they actually voting for the chairperson, vice chairperson, secretary, or does it you know does the mayor take over the chairperson and the pro tem? The mayor takes over the chairperson. The pro tem takes over the vice, and then the secretary. Is Harold. Yeah. So um, they don't. Like I think them. they. Yeah, yeah. Let me. No, what would it be? Says, in the event the executive director or slash secretary role is vacant, then they can assign it. Okay. Oh yeah, it's the first sentence. It says the executive director shall serve as. Yeah. So basically, really how that ends up showing up is he attests the mayor's, the board chair's signature on. 
Oh, I see where it is. The mayor of the city mm-hmm. shall be the chairperson. Okay, yeah. it's just not in that no, little order down below. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. <clears throat> that would make sense to have it there. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> let, let Unless them. you recommend that to uh, us, well, I'm going to let them. them. I, I just wanted it in there. I, just, yeah. I was just yeah. looking okay. for it in that mayor. section. Okay. Um, so then there's one other statement about the remover of the executive director in that section. It's still, I was having trouble typing this meeting. I'm sorry about that, but I'm here. So, so the meeting has not started. We, we did just get started. Pardon me? We did get started. But we're, hi, it's Joan. I couldn't find this meeting. The LHJ. Okay. <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, so I'm a little confused. Is this the board meeting or the commissioner's meeting? This is the advisory board meeting. Oh, we're welcome <laughs> to join. Because <laughs> <laughs> it said on my, we were sent the agenda, and I don't know why we were sent the agenda for the board meeting. Well, we have a board meeting tonight. Yeah. It says 9 a.m. on my. <laughs> oh, That's, we will double check that. Yeah, Eric, yeah. you can check it. <laughs> no problem. On the calendar invite or on the packet? <coughs> the packet said that, or the calendar invite? The the packet from. Oh, from the board meeting. Yeah, the calendar invite. Yeah, the calendar invite. Yeah, the the packet from. Oh, was it from Erica? Okay. It was from Erica. Okay. Let's see. I think. You know what? It's all good. Okay. I'm gonna go get a coffee. Okay. <laughs> 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 Um, I guess we didn't go for the rest of the board, but mm-hmm. it says after city council meeting. Yeah. I'll let you do this. Let's work that out now. Is okay. It? It's, yeah, it does not seem right. We'll work that out. Okay, so um, continuing with the bylaws update, under Article 7, Advisory Board, this is where um, we did make some changes here in advance of the election at the clerk's office recommendation just to make sure that um, so that we can carry it all the way through from bylaws to the application to the evaluation um, really what we're looking for so it just really we already made those changes i just made sure that the election piece reflected that what we're what kind of the the expertise that's being looked for so that's that this will go to the board tonight actually because we happen to be on an awkward schedule this month those forth for your recommendation. Yeah. We have to do a. Can we pass a motion yeah. just to kind of give our blessing on okay. it? Okay. I'd yeah. to approve. Second. We pass on to the board of commissioners. Yeah. You want a second? I did. did oh, yeah. did you? Mm-hmm. Okay. You were so quiet. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. So we finally get us a clean copy, right? Yes. So the unless there's changes That's tonight, right? One. Uh, right. So the I don't know if it's attached in it here, is. but I have a clean. Yes, the clean copy. This one yeah. will be get signature. That's what I have. Is a clean review. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's start on okay. to item B. Uh, LHA uh, the advisory board election update. So we are ready to open up the application period tomorrow. Um. The, everything is the same as in terms of the schedule as the last time we spoke. So if we want to recap that, we can. If you have, it's all in the minute, minutes as well. So the only change, however, is that um, the the council appointment date is not going to be December thirteenth. It'll be December twentieth, and that's when they're doing all the rest of them as well. Oh, okay. So my only uh, question for you all, I know Arlene, you provided some feedback to my question from a couple weeks ago about who. Is there anybody we should target? Um, Because we're going to make it public, but then if we have certain people we want to see it, we can definitely share it. So if there's anybody else that you'd recommend, I'm giving the clerk's office a list today. We should maybe even reach out to Cameron and say, hey, is Mm -hmm. there anybody in his law firm that Mm -hmm. would would like to participate in this? Um, or even you know some of the other law firms that he might be familiar with, so we can get the legal representative right. on that, which I think is, 
Um, I just would like to see sort of a kind of a nice variety um, How do we reach the um, minorities, the Hispanic and that? How do we reach them? So we have really good, um, in our community and neighborhood resources division, we have really good contacts with um, cultural brokers that have um, really just great contacts in the community for ways to share that. So we can utilize them It's Carmen Ramirez's group. So we could share this with her and ask her to send it around as well. Um, and then we're going to share it with, oh, I should put this on. Oh, I do have Emory on here. Emory Jensen runs the, that ECHO group, if you recall, the East County Housing Opportunity right. Group. They're really affordable housing advocates. And she has made sure that her um, group representation is, is diverse as well. So we can share with her and, and encourage her to, to pass along to her connections as well. Okay. As long as it gets out, you know, then, then the onus yeah. is on them as to whether or not they are going to do something. Right. So yeah, I just that way we can't somebody can't say, well, you forgot us or you didn't we didn't get it. I think if we at least get it out, we're okay. I'll reach out to a bank and grandma to see. Okay. Um, if you want, I'm gonna do. A, I'm making an email list. Yeah. So if you want to share that, I can do that. Yeah. So I wonder if the. Isn't it the Front Range Community College? Something like that would be interested as far as what kind of things they could bring to the table that might benefit. Could there be trainings? Could there be, you know, what kind mm -hmm. of things could they bring as far as classes or something like that comes? Maybe they would be. I don't know. Now that we've opened it up to seven, right. seven people. You can go broader. Yeah. Yeah. professors. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they could hit all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Are you directly marketing, you know, sending direct information to these groups? Yes, I'm making an email list to go for a targeted distribution, um, and then all of the um, public ones as well. Does our center have a board? They do. Yeah. That I have not seen people on there. Yeah. And <clears throat> I'm trying to think of the... Specific Hispanic, you know, but I don't know if we have any American Indian connection from there. This is maybe somebody in Karnanda. Yeah, yeah. 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 maybe some good yeah. contacts. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. I will also let you know I've, I've put on here um, just this is just the distribution to either go for it yourself or share. So I've included the LHDC board members just so they can share with their contacts. Mm -hmm. um, I mentioned Cameron and Anne Marie from Echo. Jeff King is from First Bank. He has done some of the lending on the, yeah. on the um, like Aspen Meadows, for example, some of the development projects. Mm -hmm. And then we have a couple other lenders that we've, on the city housing side, been talking to about um, inclusionary housing, Lonnie Jenkins and John Creighton. Mm -hmm. I, I need to get um, Gary Kinsey. He is a former city employee that has done he did that Kinsey Apartments up behind um, McDonald's on 19th. He oh, did that kind of on, on his own. <coughs> I'm just going to send it there. The one we've got so much and then um, a couple other. Scott McFadden is an affordable <coughs> developer here. And um, we have a, a real estate agent contact that's given the city a lot of good data that we've used in some of our city housing. I'm talking about targeted distribution for advisory board election. Yeah. Nomination. I'm sorry? Advisory board nomination. Correct. Yeah, you said election. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay, fine. Right. <laughs> Actually, I have it on as election on the, the agenda as well. Which so that's where we're going to get you. That doesn't make any sense, does it? Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> I can't hear, so I'm moving the Okay, no problem. Long, skinny table. Yep. Okay. Can you hear us? <laughs> I, I can hear you next. I was excited when the president um, moved here and it's oh, over the, over the yeah. counter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, Tom, if you don't mind, if you have anybody's email that you'd like me to include, I'll just put this on the list. I'm going to send this off. They want to do this um, all first thing tomorrow morning, so I'll get, I'll get this over to yeah. the clerk's office this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Oh, disabilities. 
Uh, yeah, we the CPWD basically is attached to Village Place, or you know, okay, it's right there. Yeah. So we've got contacts there as well. We can include at least just it's reach it's out. attached to it. But I thought I read something that it's not right. It's not part of it. Yeah, I should separate. have just said it's adjacent. They're adjacent aware of LHA, okay. etc. Yeah. And so the last thing is, um, you all need to decide when you want to hold your uh, interviews. Which needs to be the week of December 1st. I think it's in our minutes actually, so I don't have to flip through finding it. December 4th, 1st through the 9th. So uh, you don't have to decide today, but if you want to coordinate amongst yourselves with Warren, maybe as well, to set that up. Uh, we'll just want to make sure we have that set by the time the um, application period ends, which is November. That's not on our minutes. This is on our schedule. So the fourth is a Sunday, right? Oh, I'm not. Is it no, November yeah, instead? Of, yeah, no. Yeah, and December start. The first is on a Thursday. Yeah, you, you're the working, mm -hmm. the working partner here, Tom. So. You can call it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll get some dates. Okay. Okay. Just yeah. 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 The information that you're going to send out to the, you know, like we were talking to Target uh, the Chamber and, and mm -hmm. specifics. Could you, can you box that up and send it to me? Yeah, sure. And then I can quickly contact people that I've heard are interested. So, sure. And I can just give them the link. This is what to do. Okay. okay. I can do that. Thanks. All right, so let's go on to item C, the 2023 board meeting schedule. Uh, so I just wanted to, the, the board is looking at setting their schedule, and I wanted to um, just give you a heads up that we're going to be moving it from the first Tuesday of the month to the third Tuesday of the month. Um, and that was partly because it ended up getting pretty challenging. We never had the reports ready on time that early in the month for the, for the prior look back. Um, and then that worked out well with, with the board's schedule. So that then means that, that this meeting is held on the same day as the board meeting for all of 2023, except for the January meeting. Um, yeah. Why don't we do it like the week ahead? Yeah, that's right. It's the second Tuesday. The second Tuesday. <clears throat> so I was going to then, propose that you either think about that maybe now, or if you want to wait till the first January meeting is set for the third Tuesday right now, which is not the same as the board, but you could decide with the new members if you wanted, or you could just have that set out so they understand what they're getting into. That. Yeah, I would, I would like to communicate that to them now. So if they, yeah. you know, if they do get elected, we're like, they know we, we are going to meet. Yeah, for right. next year on the second Tuesday. I agree. Okay. Start with January. Yeah. Start with January. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm looking so at the second Tuesday. Tuesday. Maybe it would be good to have it on the second Tuesday because mm -hmm. it's right before Christmas. Right. Um, and then, yeah. right, and we don't have a board meeting in December. Yeah. So that's, if you guys want to okay, propose so that, that's fine. Um, yeah. Want to do that? Yeah, let's do that. Mm -hmm. Do okay. the second Tuesday in, okay, so yeah. the third Second Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, so keep the November fifteenth one as is. Yeah. Move December or move to the second Tuesday starting December. Um, I had a note about that one. So what did you oh, I'll, it, for the November meeting, we'll lay out a, a date, the calendar of dates. Yeah, right? the whole calendar. Okay. Okay, that was that. Go on to number five, development project updates. Uh, so just highlighting a couple things um, for Village Place, through syndication, the residents are, are quite eager to see, yeah. see, some, see some things happen. Yeah. We are still on the same schedule that we gave 
earlier in the year where we were going to be really doing design heavily at the first of 2024. Um, so what we're doing right now is we are speaking with the existing investor about how that exit will look. We're meeting actually with attorneys and um, accountants and our consultant all this afternoon to talk about what option looks best. And then um, that's really the first step because that will then plan out what we need to do going forward in terms of right. do we do the exit first and then are we closing and what should that look like. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, I am getting started um, on doing an RFP for architecture and design. Yes. So we're going to be putting that together and then getting that out so that we can hit the ground running with that in the first of the year. So we're going to start also right now um, the resident survey process, talking about what kind of things they'd like to see as we put together that architecture contract. You did one. Yes. <laughs> I, we wrote it down. We wrote down everything that we should remember for Village Place. Oh. So that's awesome. most that we knew of, you know, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so the rest of the end of this year, we'll be doing that architecture contracting process and working with the investors to figure out what our plan will be for that exit. So then the actual project is going to start in 2024. Uh, yes. Okay. So the, mm -hmm. so that's, I'm sorry, I meant to no. say January 1st is when we start the design of 2023. Yeah. We will close on the financing by the end of 2023 and then start construction in yeah. 2024. Yeah, okay. sorry, I think, All right. I think I mixed up those numbers yeah. before. Um, we are working also with the city team doing the Kaufman Street busway. And we're trying to make sure that our construction coordinates to make it as at least in the least amount of um, headache mm -hmm. as possible. Uh, but also, we're having some really good... Um, affinities because they're going to be doing some of the storm drain work for us that's really needed for that parking lot so it all ties together and that is appropriately within their scope and so that's really great that we don't have to work yeah, back into their design. It's an, it's an alley that comes off of um, Launch Peak that is an alley that we own that moves into the parking lot mm -hmm. so the drainage is intermixed in that area so that's why the, they're trying to deal with that as well. So that will be cost savings on our side. Mm -hmm. We can back into their design and they're going to cover most of the underground pieces for that. Okay. Um, for the Hoverland right over here, mm -hmm. take a little tour after the meeting. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's just grass. Um, <laughs> it's, we, are, we had our first interview for development partners yesterday we have one more this afternoon and two tomorrow so we're um, in deep uh, waiting through developer opportunities to see what might make sense and then coming up with once we select them then we'll really start to say what does a good schedule look like what do the funding sources how should we arrange all of that to get the ARPA money spent that we want to spend but also bring in whatever else is needed so that is but it's multi-family. Yes. Multi. Yes. Yeah, it won't be an age restricted. We're not looking to make it age restricted. So it'll be family-oriented housing. Um, I think the thing that's coming into play now, most of the projects we're going to look at because of interest rates and just where the market is, um, and they talked about it yesterday, is maximizing density and the number of units mm -hmm. um, because you're going to need that to support uh, the the construction loan and perm loans and things like that and, and and honestly I think in the resyndication the interest rates are probably going to control mm -hmm. some timing too um, as we watch it because you know just how much will we be able to get in this market and what that looks like we're going to have to pay pretty close attention to all of these things we're considering that the schedule, like what makes sense to hurry up and what makes yeah, sense to just I mean, let it sit for a second. Maybe. I'm not, I'm not real disappointed that we didn't, that we pushed it off because we would have been caught in higher interest rates if we would have done it on the original schedule. Right. Maybe pushing the closing to later. Yeah. You know. As long as like we can get the ARPA yeah, yeah. money spent, spent. the land. Yeah. Controlled, have a development partner so we know what the plan should be going forward. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and so then... When, when's, your, uh, when's your goal to have a decision made on that? Is it sometime this month or next month? So we should, now? Yeah, probably next week. Yeah, okay. Um, cool. yeah. Right. We're kind of playing it by ear to see how closely it all comes, you know, yeah, how does the spread look like? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if it's close, we may pull the top two back in mm -hmm. and get more in depth with them on certain issues. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it just depends on what we see. Where are we on the naming? Uh, we still need to speak with Stuart Family Foundation. I still haven't done that. No, okay. I have, no okay. to be honest. Um, but we have a plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we I just haven't been able to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and but that is the plan: is to to go to them. So I wanted to touch base on the Aspen Meadows flooring. Um, <laughs> yeah. So um, the latest is the whenever this type of thing happens, the manufacturer will do whatever they can to not um, claim responsibility. Mm -hmm. And so we are meeting actively with Palace and with the architect to figure out what the best plan is. Um, our preference is to go through an insurance claim because then we could get the whole thing redone. This is what insurance is there for. This is what it should be. What we're talking to them is um, the the architecture firm. You know, they're they're pretty concerned that this that it's not that simple, and that um, it turns into a two year legal thing. And um, she's afraid that's going to put her out of business because so. We're letting her come up with a proposal to fix it otherwise, or else we have to go with the insurance. We don't have a source to just um, do yeah. that on our own. Source is yeah. worse every day. They are. So we took Palace in and did a tour mm -hmm. and showed that now even the areas that they did that test run on to see if they could um, reuse the flooring but fix the issue, it's not working. Mm -hmm. So um, this is it's, it's all in progress. Yeah. We're meeting with them next week to talk about that. Okay, what's your proposal then, or else we have to go to insurance and we will just pull the trigger and go. That's the idea. So it's in progress. It was it's really unfortunate. So, um, and then the last thing I wanted to mention is we're starting to get some very creative um, pr proposals for partnerships with the LIJ, private developers are or existing affordable housing are looking for the LHA to partner with them for things like um, property management or I, I just think they see a lot of opportunity and also they might be struggling with I don't know everybody's struggling in some way with uh, the rent changes or economics or something but one specific interesting one is the um, there's a mobile home park that is owner, I'm sorry, resident owned. They did that a couple years ago. Um, this That is like the, the latest thing for mobile home parks is if you can get them to be resident owned, they can have control of their rent structure and costs and it remains affordable. And so we, we did, the city assisted um, one park to become resident owned a couple years ago. Um, and that's great. Now, since that was one of the first wave, now we're seeing the second step. What comes next? Well, now they don't actually really have great um, capacity for maintenance and capital improvements and property management and all those things. So um, one reached out to us to uh, see if we could discuss LHA having an agreement to, to perform some of those services and then having a revenue stream for LHA without, you know, necessarily having the liability of having the property. Um, we are right now, we have, we, we've dipped our toes in that pond mm -hmm. because we do have one affordable um, apartment complex that they wanted to do, put affordable units on site as part of their inclusionary housing mm -hmm. requirement, but they just didn't, they weren't, they didn't know, you know, how to do the yeah, rents and yeah. the compliance. So um, Lisa's group does that in their suite. And so we, for a fee, perform that work for them. So we do have a little bit of precedence there. It seems like the interest is expanding. Yeah, the issue in the mobile home park is going to be, A, uh, they're going to have to 
of generating enough revenue to hire a property man or to let us hire a property manager. Mm -hmm. And then they're also going to have to be able to pick up the administrative overhead that's associated with that. Um, and then obviously extra to go into kind of fund balance for us. And so the question for them, I asked Molly to send a, because they went, they went to Molly, I asked her to send back and say, are you prepared to do these things? And if you're not prepared to do those things, then, you know, we're not going to come into it and stress our system mm -hmm. even more. So um, we'll see what they, what they say. Yeah, so we would just be having, you know, come up with the cost and then have uh, some sort of market on that. Yeah, just yeah, right. good. Have is this being done anywhere else in the state? That you could not that I've heard of, but we haven't haven't dug in to reach out and find out. Um, it's been very common. That this discussion about having the residents take over ownership has been mm -hmm. very prevalent. Right. And I think that that's only within the last few years. And I think that those very first ones that went through are now. This is probably going to become more common. Yeah, I think it's kind of like now. What do we do? Mm -hmm. And so it's it's those unintended consequences of some of these programs where you get in and oh it's great residents own it mm -hmm. and then they're sitting there going now what do we do yeah that's going to be an interesting dynamic mm -hmm. yep because um, with the owner telling the manager what to do it's a little different right yeah so yeah yeah that's a that's a tricky one yeah not just financially but yeah. And in, terms, in terms of uh, maintenance and that, do we have capacity for that too? Or? They're going to have to absorb that too. Yeah, yeah. 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 they have to absorb yeah. everything. Yeah. 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 They might wind up just hiring the maintenance guy. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah the, the benefit the for them is they know that we know how to do this, mm -hmm. we know how to manage it well, mm -hmm. um, and it might be a simplified payment structure for them than going having to go out for their own contracts all the time and yeah. that type of thing. It's kind of like the HOA concept yeah. where they hire property managers mm -hmm. to do. It's the same thing, except I think um, what they're looking at is a markup on the property manager world is probably much higher than what ours would be. And I think that's what they're looking at. Mm -hmm. On the other side of it, on the opportunities, so um, we've seen a couple of projects come in citywide, of which the um, the, the, the margins and then being able to do this have shifted with the markets. And so there's one project where it's almost completely designed and they were looking at construction. <clears throat> um, folks are coming in and saying that uh, it's not in traditional lending. They're not able to pencil it. Um, and they're throwing out the idea of the LIHTC, um funding. So it's a tech, it only income tax credit. Funding and uh, so a couple have approached us about the conversion of what was um, originally designed as a market rate deal into a light tech deal. Um, obviously, for us, uh, you know, we're saying management is something that we want if we go into this to increase the revenue streams, the ongoing revenue streams, mm -hmm. and those actually make some a little more sense because they're going to have to absorb that cost no matter what. Mm -hmm. And that's already factored in their pro forma. It's just they're trying to get the better financing model to get the deal done. So we're seeing a couple of those creep in, and I think all of that's just a product of the economy and the market. Yeah. And hopefully seeing a couple of LHAs. <laughs> yeah, I think, well, I think that's the difference, honestly. I think they're, they're seeing it, and I think people are referring them to us now. Mm -hmm. Versus where they yeah. weren't referring anyone to the housing authority. Mm -hmm. So that's all I have for development yeah. updates today. Okay. And Christmas is definitely getting going, right? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. That's yeah. a lot of activity. Yeah. Keep moving dirt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's the first step. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's go on to number seven, resident quality of life. I think we skipped, we skipped number six. six. Oh, did we? Yeah, we didn't. Right. Budget yeah. and rents. Number six, and items yeah. for input. Yeah. 2023 budget and rents. So, Kendra, I'm going to get kick off because we don't have another meeting with you. And it's before the November 1st board meeting where the budget's being considered. 
Um, so it's really all, st it's, it's completely in flux right now. It's go time for Kendra and Harold putting this yep. together. Yep. Um, so I just wanted to give just a very more high level, like what are the themes that we're seeing as an update to you all. And then on your November 15th meeting after the, the budget is approved, then Kendra will go through and be more specific about what's, what's been approved. Am I doing that, or do you want me to say? <laughs> I'm going to be well, very wrong. Well, and I'll talk about Kendra and I met last week. And and what we're seeing is, I mean, and, and it's interesting, is it's also um, connected to your rape resyndications and, and how you deal with these issues. So Village Place, for example, <laughs> everything is connected and linked. So Village Place, for example, hasn't historically charged the rents that they were allowed to charge. And so where that becomes an issue is that when you go into these resyndication models, it's for your investors, it's pay me now or pay me later. And so if you under collect the revenue that you projected in the financing model, um, when you go into resyndication and you transfer that property to do all of that, they want a bigger chunk of the money um, because they haven't met their financial requirements, which actually reduces then what you're able to put into the structure to redo it. Yeah. So we were seeing that as an issue in Village Place. Um, unfortunately, we're seeing it all over the place historically. So, well, we think. Um, and, and so when you, when you look at the rent structures, um, we have been trying to keep up with it. We brought Lisa into that conversation. So I think the, the work that we've been doing recently is probably more on point, but it's the historical component of this in catching up. So we asked Kendra to pull some reports because when you <clears throat> when you look at rent for the next year, there was a question that came up in Village Place. I just signed my lease. Is that my rent? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's your rent for 12 months. Mm -hmm. And so historically, I think when they would talk about rent increases in the budget, and, and we kind of followed them, not having the depth of knowledge we needed in this. We would look at it and say, well, here's the rent increase, and then it's holistically applied to everything. The reality is, is that you don't collect that rent until the contract renews. And so, but we are almost taking on half of the yeah. increase. Yeah, yeah. yeah. averaging that. Right. Yeah. So I talked to, Kendra and I talked about really creating a spreadsheet that she had most of the data in, but adding the contract date to it mm -hmm. so that we could accurately project when the rents were going to come in mm -hmm. and, and also understand what is the rent increase that's mm -hmm. needed first to catch them up to the current market and two, projecting what the market increase is going to be because it lags. So we're going to, We've looked historically at, here's historically what how the rents have moved. Yeah. And so we're gonna do an analysis on that to go, here's what the trend line looks like. And then we're gonna hedge off of that lower um, so that we can somewhat catch up. We will never quite catch up because the state releases them in April. So <clears throat> there will be, as I said to the village place, there will be rent increases um, we just, um, we're, we're fine-tuning that right now. So do you have a top of an increase? This would be going to the people. So is there a top, say, 10% or 5% or something like that? Or is that's that what I want to see. So that's what I want to see, the numbers, because yeah. so you may have people that are on market and it's minimal. You may have people that have historically been behind. And so I don't want to hit anyone with a 10% increase. Mm -hmm. And so what we'll have to do once we see this is, so let's say someone is at 10%, and let's say that the, the market, the projected market increase was two. So we're gonna come in with 2%, and we may add 2% a year on top of the market increase, mm -hmm. um, so that we know within four years we're gonna have, or three years we're gonna have them caught up. But we need to do the math to understand what does that really mean financially, <clears throat> so if a 2% is two bucks, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we may go max at 10. If 2% is $100, mm -hmm. 
then we may we're gonna have to figure out what that sweet spot is. But yeah, you don't want to uh, hit anyone for a crazy amount, and so it's how do you accomplish that over time? So those are all things we've talked about. And while balancing and fair housing, right? Because that really comes into play with rent increases. Mm -hmm. And, and is this is this going to be affecting more of the, the the long term residents more like yeah, because no. yeah. when you come in and you're going to be well, what, I, yeah. what I'm hearing is you're still going to be aware of not kicking anybody out because you know like a ten percent increase would kick some of the, some folks out yeah they're they're fixed income and and they, you know they're at the whims of social security. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's I think the thing that that Molly said within fair housing is how do you mm -hmm. how do you craft the policy because the very things that we're we're hearing and and, and Arlene's been and a number of you know the very thing that we're hearing is we want this and we want this and we want this the reason we're not able to do it is because we're not generating enough revenue and and so we're trying to balance all of those things out. Um, because the reality for the housing authority is, um, right now we've probably kicked close to three seventy five, well, close to two hundred and fifty thousand. So if we take what Jillian was making and what oh, Kinsey was making, so that's like two hundred. Well, that was like two hundred seventy five, three hundred thousand. You know, we've kicked about one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand into the operations. Mm -hmm. Um, with us taking on this work. So if you had to hire an executive director to do this, you wouldn't have that. Mm -hmm. And the pressures would be even greater. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to to look, that's what Kinder can probably talk through, but that's kind of a high-level, quick overview of what we've been trying to figure out. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the thing that I've, I've seen, which is probably even something that I, I myself do, is the minute that you say we're going to raise the rent, then everybody's mind just stops listening to anything you've got to say after that mm -hmm. and they automatically just jump in and say am i going to have to move i'm going to have to look for another place you know and so i don't know how you get beyond that because it, that's what i was seeing was that you know all of a sudden it's i'm not listening to anything else that's being said because i know that i'm going to have to pay an extra fifty hundred dollars you know yeah that's one of the things that um I've been doing it as for Meadows, and you know our coffee, and we can kind of spread out. And I'm bracing them for at least a four percent increase, because four percent was what, and I'm not, sh I don't know about the new financing, but that's what we had the limit on under uh, the original um, tax credit mm -hmm. issue. So I'm just telling you, you know, we've got we got to cover costs, you know, and trying to get them used to the idea that after years and years and years of no increase, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're due for an increase. So I'm trying to get it gently, mm -hmm. you know, so it's not shock. So if it's only a 3%, oh, Gene was wrong. <laughs> they yeah. love it, you yeah. know. <laughs> but, you know you, but you see what I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to get that tone, get, mm -hmm. the, you know, get the ease, the easy impact. But anyway. So we, we tried to, when we first sat down to kick off this, the budget, we came up with a list of everything, what costs are increasing on us mm -hmm. yeah. that we can't control exactly, and what things can we control. Right. And almost everything was in the can't control bucket, mm -hmm. like salaries and um, so costs of snow, yes. not all of the expenses yeah. virtually. Mm -hmm. And then on the one side, we have the things that we can control. Residents were requesting more access to funding for activities and mm -hmm. amenities and those things. Mm -hmm. And that was the only thing that was in our control. Mm -hmm. And we want to be able to provide that. We've heard that over and over and over. That's what they want. So how do we handle all this? And then can we still handle this? We want to. How does that all work? So that's what framed it for us. Like When you're thinking about everything that's changing in the world and the cost of everything, that's it's just it's just a tough spot. Yeah, and it's no it's no different than. Oh, yes. I mean, it's a little different than the city budget. But to give you an example, we took we have level one, which is must pay bills. Mm -hmm. um, we typically average between seven and nine hundred thousand 
annually in level one increases mm -hmm. is one point nine million dollars this year. Mm -hmm. I mean that's just the impact of inflation. Mm -hmm. And so we're seeing the same movement. It's not dramatically different than what we're seeing in, in the cities. It's just that we have more room via diverse revenue sources coming in that we could hit some level two, but you know, between our level one increases and our salary increases, that eight millions of dollars and we're seeing the same thing. Well one of the things that they constantly talk about is that you know people are being replaced all the time. Well the answer to that is, you know, the salaries are higher somewhere else. So we need in order mm -hmm. to keep people, we've got to meet those salaries. So we plugged in, um, I talked to Kendra Friday on this. We're we're actually um, coming in with the same approach that we use for the city and assuming that because um, that we saw some of the benchmarking data that wasn't, um, I didn't quite get it, but I think the problem is the data source, which is external to us. Um, so basically, if you're at market or um, even over market, because that's where I was seeing a mix, 6% um, increase matching what we did for the city. Mm -hmm. And then if you're under market, max the increase out at 12%. So it's exactly the same philosophy we're using on that data set. And, and that's critical because people are moving and, and they're flipping pretty fast on us. So we think that uh, we're just gonna take the same approach and then um, I'm gonna work with Joanne in terms of the Mercer study that we paid for to include the housing authority positions um, in that benchmarking process as well. Yeah, that's okay. Because any increase we have is going to impact what's available from housing shows. Yeah. Well, the Mercer study is these, you know, so um, everybody in, seems like in Colorado is reaching out to compensation consultants. Um, and we put an RFP out, and we had a lot of in state consultants. They weren't giving us what we wanted. Because what we were specifically asking is like, I don't want to know how we've always looked at compensation, I want to know what the future compensation is going to look like. Mm -hmm. And so none of our, our more in-house state could really do that. Um, so we went to the big three, which is Towers, Watson, Mercer, and then Ann. Is it Ann? Um, Ann? No, no, it's um, not Ernston. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. Um, Towers, and uh, if you've watched, if you've read any CNN articles, you'll see Towers and Mercer being quoted. Um, they both kind of engaged, Mercer really engaged, and so we've signed a contract with Mercer, and that works underway now. Mm -hmm. So we're going to bring this in, too, um, and we'll see what we're going to see. Um, uh, but yeah. Are they factoring in benefits as well? Included they are. This is going to be a total comp look in terms of benefits. The, the interesting piece on that is we used to be really well positioned on benefits. Um, we're starting to see that people are catching up to us. And so, um, but we're still, I think I would say, in the top quarter, top third, in terms of, especially now with the benefits that we brought over with the health insurance and things like that, but we're seeing people catch up. And that's to the city's perspective. I don't I don't have a really good sense on total comp, how we set up the houses the way, but, but it will be total comp. Mm -hmm. And part of the problem with the benchmarking, at least for the housing authority side, is there's only like six to seven companies that submit stuff to the survey. So, you know, what we were seeing, what we're having struggles with this year is like, it's different companies. They have different amounts. So it's either going down when we've just raised you because mm -hmm. last year different companies reported and it puts you up. So that's why we had to. We did have people falling in within the 6 to 12% range, but we did have some that were going over and we did have some that were going less. And that's why we said max is 6 or minimum is 6, max is 12, mm -hmm. so that we could at least be consistent because they're still getting the city guidance as well and listening to that. You know, our LHA staff is also listening that they're probably expecting anywhere from 6 to 12% as well because mm -hmm. they're listening to the same And they're working alongside. And they're working alongside. And, 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 yeah. and the, the data issues are not unique to the housing authority. So we were, that's what we were seeing 
um, and Mountain States is the one that was getting information. And so what ends up happening is, so not everyone was presenting. So literally, I had positions that I specifically dug in with our comp and benefit person, where literally you may have 10 people come in in the previous year's study, and you could have five people come in in this year's study, and those five were the lower paying entities. So all of a sudden, it artificially shifted the market down because you lost your higher paying entities, and and so it was the, the it was just chaotic okay. in in that, and it's so dependent on who submits their their pay information, and, and so we just um, started going out to agencies and looking at what are they planning on for increases. The other thing we saw is Mountain State said, oh, we think it's 4% range, but, but well, I'm in the meetings with all the city managers and they're talking of six. Mm -hmm. So we came back and went, no, that's not what we're hearing. And sure enough, six is pretty close. Mm -hmm. um, on the city side, we were able to hold some dollars um, that if, if we have to make some more movements as a result of Mercer, we have some dollars to do it. It's going to be harder on the housing authority side. So that may be more of an incremental step into if we see some big shifts. So is the overall thing based on the CPI nationally or locally? No, or it's or uh, you, you base it on market. So like if Tom were an engineer, mm -hmm. so we go in and look at the engineering market. And we specifically look at that. So one of that the engineering market is one that we had to adjust by 10% mid-year because it moved that much that fast. Yeah. And so that's the problem right now is that everything is in flux and, you know, we're in a, we're in an arms race, mm -hmm. um, not, not only with public employers today, we're in an arms race with private employers in terms of mm -hmm. hiring individuals. And, um, you know, if you drive by McDonald's and you look at the window, I said it's sixteen fifty an hour. Mm -hmm. And so we shifted last year our hourly employees of, um, as much as three dollars an hour to thirteen fifty or to fifteen fifty. We also planned in this budget with uh, how we do it even more. So everybody's just chasing everyone, and 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 that was we thought that would change the further we got out from the pandemic. But I think what we're starting to realize in the labor market is. Well, a lot of um, boomers were hanging on to their jobs. I think what we saw as a result of the pandemic was that a lot of them just started saying, it's time for me to retire. Mm -hmm. And you have Gen X coming behind them, which is half of the labor force. Mm -hmm. So you don't have enough bodies coming in. Now, granted, the Gen Y and Z are larger, but they're just not at the same point in the job market, and so that is, I think, what's creating some of the pressures. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so part of our struggle too is what we found is last year about the same time we went and we updated all the properties to the to the tax credit rent so we could get an idea. Of here's what the tax credit rent is. Here's what rent's happening. What is the gain or loss? Are we gaining because we have subsidy? Or are we losing because the rents weren't at what they needed to be? Um, what we're finding is the community managers have had access to change those numbers. So that's what I'm doing right now is changing them back. And I've locked down their access to do that. <laughs> but we've lost that visibility. So it looks like we have no gain to loss. And it was really hard to project revenue because we don't really know what the tax credit rent is anymore. So that's what I'm updating now so that we can get a handle on doing that report that Harold Harold's suggested so that we can see exactly like, okay, where are you at? You know, where is this person at versus the tax credit rent? Yeah. Um, and what can we, you know, because you're going to have people that could be close to the tax credit rent. You can have people that are not even close because they've been in the property for so long. And if we haven't had rate increases, it's going to be a little different. So how do you, how do you juggle that? How do you say... This person's already at tax credit and wouldn't have any rent increase mm -hmm. because he can't go above that. And then you have this person who's not, 
you know, so that's that's going to be the struggle, I think, for, you know, once we start, you know, you can see some are going to get an increase and some are not. And then you have to talk. I, I was raised one of you, but they don't know what each is paying, right? right. So how do, you, how do you work with that struggle as well? And it's income-based, and it's this. And so um, we will then probably, <clears throat> when we get this and start talking, we will be in every property kind of working through. <laughs> it's not the same for everyone, and here's why it's not the same for everyone. And, and you know, if you moved in more in your more recent move in, you may not have as big or an increase just based on the fact you've been at market. Mm -hmm. um, and part of that message I, I was thinking about on the way here is also, you also, those who have to have big increases have also had the benefit of really not paying what they should have been over time. So there has been a savings for them over time too. Granted, it doesn't ease the blow anymore, but, and again, reinforcing what Molly said, any policy for increases has to meet the fair housing tax. Mm -hmm. so. When is the last time that rents were raised? It was before you guys took over, right? Yeah, I, I, I actually even think they might have got an approval for a rent increase at the end of 2019, but it didn't get enacted because of COVID. Mm -hmm. yeah. COVID happened, so I don't think they enacted it. So I don't know what happened between that. So what so I'd like to do too is, once we get this data, is see like, okay, what is the, the, the tenant that has lived here the longest? Mm -hmm. How long have they been here? And what do those tax credit rents look like? Like how has the tax credit been increasing? And how have LHA been increasing? Mm -hmm. We may see a flat line. We may see, you know, we may, you know, so it might be interesting to actually see that. But mm -hmm. to get us to the tax credit might take some time for some of these. Well, and I think we were noticing that with the Hearthstone and the Lodge. Yeah. You know, they weren't requesting increases. Um, I requested, um, I think one property was 8% and one property was 10%. Um, now, obviously, that doesn't affect them because they're already paying. Yeah, they're, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. they're at a subsidy. So yeah. whatever it is, it's going to be HUD paying. Yeah. HUD came back and said, with the Lodge, you only get 5%. And so I said, is there an appeal process? <laughs> yeah. Because basically he took everything that's like standard. Like he took the wrong um, salary for the community manager. And so it's, he was deducting that. He took our insurance, which is, we're going to have to pay that. He took some money away from that. I was like, these are, these are all areas that we can't deduct from. So he got some more information from us, and, and even the snow removal, the snow removal, he dropped me down to $8,000. <laughs> and I said, we've already spent $15,000 this year, we have, we're not even through the, the full year. So um, he did request the procurement for the snow removal, so we gave him that. And like, the problem is, is that our, and he was going off prior years, mm -hmm. and the problem is our prior year snow removal contract was based on monthly. And that's probably why they terminated our contract. They weren't getting it on a per pole basis. It was like twelve hundred dollars a month. So if you had five snow poles in that month, he couldn't even afford to pay his employees. So I could see why he would have wanted to terminate yeah. that contract. Yeah. Um, but we could get it down without coupling it with the landscaping. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully it's back out to appeal. So we'll see. Um, but they weren't going to give us more than five. A five percent increase. So we'll see what happens, and then if they if they don't, if they say no, because um, I imagine every housing authority, every two hundred two property is going to be coming in because they all got have inflation. Mm -hmm. Well, and it also depends on the market too. So we're, you know, Boulder County. I mean, so they work on a regional level, right? So HUD. This yeah. is a region. And so, even within the metro area, Boulder County pricing is going to look different than, well, let's even say the Springs. I mean, that's probably the most drastic differential is um, our pricing is completely different than the Springs. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
And so I think that's where HUD has a hard time as they look at it on nat national and regional averages and maybe sometimes metro areas, but they don't understand the nuances and the difference in the metro areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And will this also eat up like our uh, project-based vouchers too? Will that decrease that as well if we're increasing the lines? Um, no, so so the project based vouchers you cannot go over a market rent. So you can so if, if market rent increases, we'll be able to increase that, but it's only gonna really hit the subsidy unless the, the tenants income changes. Um, so we'll still budget for the market rent for any PBDs for project based vouchers and we'll do the tax credit for all the others, but any H C B we will not budget for. We won't budget for that increase because they're portable and they can move. And that's kind of actually cushioned us because basically what we've been budget, we're, we actually have more revenue coming in, but a lot of that is because of the HCB. You know, some properties we started with three that had HCB and now we have seven. So they're making more revenue because we do get to go to that fair market and they were going to that fair market before we came on. Mm -hmm. um, we also did get the suites. Um, we had to go through DOH to get approval to increase the, the voucher amount at the suites. And so we did get approval, so those will be increased. But they, they won't be increased, I think, to market. I think they had to go to a little shy below market because we have asked for increases along this. Too big of a jump. Um, but it looks like the entire market will be changing. And then, you know, Utilities are going up. I think the, the cost is anywhere from six to twelve percent, depending on the utilities. Mm -hmm. um, we're we're seeing just increases across the board. It's great that we have both David and Calvin on board because they've saved a lot of money just with not having to do a third party to do the repairs and the labor. They're just being you know, able to purchase the parts, mm -hmm. and they're working on getting very many <laughs> agencies. Um, hooked up with LAJ so that they can get the parts at a, at a reasonable yeah. price. So yeah, yeah. Good. Good. issue credit <clears throat> requests. So the only thing that I just want to say, when you guys go out to these um, places and talk to them about rent, please don't move their bread table. <laughs> <laughs> When we were at Village Place, when they were trying to talk about rent, mm -hmm. the people really wanted to talk about the fact that they were going to move the table with that has all the bread and goodies or whatever else on it to another area that would be really, I mean, would be just fine. That was the major thing they wanted to talk about that day was do not move our bread table. Which was interesting, so I walked out and I was trying to get to another meeting and some of them caught me. And, and so they were like, that was ridiculous, mm. it's fine. And so there's a whole fight occurring mm -hmm. yeah. right now. And there's, I think, three factions. Um, the ones that were talking to me were like, it's fine, it's not a big deal. They were actually mad at the lady that does the newsletter because of the plants. Because they voted to not have the plants there, and she put them there anyway. So they were mad at her. They were also mad at the lady that was really on the... They were mad because um, what, what we didn't know where we were sitting was, and where I think you were sitting, was they kept telling her to shut up, and she wouldn't. Right, they did. And so... So there's there's three factions in there. So it was interesting after it was all over, they were all like, we're sorry. Um, and, and I should have said this to Lisa sooner. They said it really has been better than it's ever been. And we're sorry. And, you know, mm -hmm. we're trying to help you. So it was, a, <laughs> it was an experience. I was going to say, they even had the signs on the walker protesting the bread table movement. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Um, and it's just it. Yeah, it's just moving it to another floor. I mean, you got to go somewhere to get it anyway. It's like. Yeah, and you know, I didn't, I didn't get into it a lot then, but just based on the nature of the traffic we have there, um, from a, um, um, what do you call those people? The exterminators. Oh yeah, that's the we, we need to be pretty on point. 
-hmm. on what we're spraying on anywhere near entrances, especially at that location, because I think the opportunity, um, we know that the people that sometimes congregate in those areas carry bed bugs. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we've run into our own issues with bed bugs, <laughs> but you know, we've seen it in our buildings. And it doesn't take much for those things, for bed bugs to, to take hold in a facility. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and I didn't want to get into that depth, but yeah, we need to do the, the heavy duty spraying mm -hmm. on those entry level floors because that's going to be your first entrance point for any kind of um, yeah. bed bugs or you name it. Well, I just have to bring that up. <laughs> I, I've had some PTSD over that one. <laughs> 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 so where are we on the rents then, Kendra? Are you still piling through? <clears throat> we're still piling through because um, last week, both Friday and Monday, we're getting ready for the MLR on it and getting that stuff sent yeah. over. So um, yeah, we might be. Um, I might be contracting a dynamic help to help get. Sorry. I've gotten two properties updated. Once I get the properties updated, it'll be quick. Yeah. We'll pull up reports, yeah. do some view lookups, and, and get all the data. Um, so that's not going to take too long but it's getting the time that <laughs> it takes the longest because it won't update certain units if they already have a certification and they're already you know these community managers are on top of their game so they've already got certifications out for ready for December mm -hmm. so yeah. if they've got those I can't change the amounts I have to manually change them so mm -hmm. So that's our high level budget <laughs> discussion. <laughs> I promised Kendra I wouldn't I wouldn't go too into the numbers that are all in flux, but Well I mean and that is that actually is high level. I know that's how I complex mean, it is yeah. this year. Yeah. 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 Alright. Uh on a bad debt policy revisions. So Kendra, I put this if you may not recall, but I put this on here because this is going to go to the board November 1st as well. The She's going to be redlining, but we just updated the bad debt policy in twenty the end of 2020 or 2021? 2021. 2021. Very, 2021. Very um, we're taking some edits to that to the board so that Kendra can build that into the budget. Mm -hmm. And because, like for example, we're preparing for an audit that's happening at these two properties, a very important one. Um, and that all, it's all playing in. We want to make sure that that policy is um, reflecting what we need to. So I just said that, that this was, I know it's not written yet. The red line's not written. Oh, but I started. started. Oh, good. Yes. Because so you just want to give, again, this is a <laughs> yeah, high level so, since it is going to the board before we meet with so you. So part of it was, um, I think, just a miscommunication um, between accounting, community managers, like who, who's, who was responsible for what. Um, so we're getting a little more down into the details to say, okay, initial letter goes to Lisa. And mainly because we were having initial letters go out that may have had too much cleaning. Like this person's been there for 15 years and they're getting charged for, you know, paint and everything that, that would have been normal wear and tear type of thing. Mm -hmm. So the first initial one goes through Lisa so she can scrub it to make sure that, you know, the charges are... are are good to go. Mm -hmm. um, once that, then the community manager um, does a 30 day notice and a 60 day. The 30 day is like, you know, just try to work out a repayment plan, whatever. 60 days is going to be like, you know, in 30 days we're sending you over to collections. Um, then it'll come to our department to say, is it worth going to collections or do we just need to write it off? So we'll have a threshold there. Um, and then we also needed to add the housing twist voucher because they are finding a lot of misreported income and we probably have 10 right now um, that we're tracking on a repayment plan. They come in and they sign a repayment plan and then we have to, um, we just figured out how to get into Yardi so we have a ledger and we can, <laughs> we can see that. Um, but that needs to be put in there too because their, their process is a little different. They find the misreported income. They bring that to you know. They bring that voucher holder in. They sign a repayment plan, you know. And then there's an area of default. Like, are they paying? Are they not paying? And you know what the levels are there too. Um, so it's just getting more detailed and fine tuned so that everybody knows really what their responsibility is. So there's two important things. First of all, we, if it was just a 
pretty basic process revision. We wouldn't necessarily necessarily take it to the board, but because this is for you too, because they have to authorize Kindra to make the call on the blank where you're uh, making the call, whether it's go to collections or not. Is that yeah. Heard of? Well, that and and we wanted to also give me some responsibility to like if there's six dollars left on the account to be able to write that off. Not have to go through Carol. Not have to. They already you know, did that to say if it wasn't over. No, they did yours. If it's not over five thousand, mm -hmm. but there I'm not in there. Mm. Well, I'm not in there, I so I can't. Exactly I did put it in. I don't um, know that we necessarily need that change because I can delegate you to say you have three thousand. Mm -hmm. so okay. Yeah. Anyway, this is good discussion yeah. for this. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I mean, we have, have a lot of now. a lot of stuff out there that's very small dollars and. It's just sitting out there. It's yeah. Well, and the other important piece that's feeding into this is the, the stuff that she's finding for HCB. Well, actually, it's Tracy's Tracy. group. Yeah. Um, we are in a phase, I don't think we talked about this last time. We are in a phase where um, we have full staff in HCB. We have a compliance manager going back through and really doing quality control checks. And we are finding fraud in some instances. We are finding mistakes and old things that we're trying to fix for the benefit of us not getting in trouble as, as the right. housing authority, but also the tenant not getting in trouble or being in an even worse payback situation. So we are getting a good amount of complaints right now because people were, were used to a certain thing and it was not correct and we're trying to correct it and now that's not comfortable. So yeah, we're in that phase, but we're really doing, it's feeding into everything else and trickling into our policies to make sure we're, um, just starting from a good foot. So our meeting with everyone on the HCB, um, I'm meeting with them alongside with Tracy. Um, on anyone that owes over Eric is at five thousand, and so I've had three, four meetings so far, um, and so we work payment arrangements. Um, just so you know, uh, typically if folks come in and they accept responsibility. So the typical payment arrangement is three years. Um, if folks come in and accept responsibility, um, and all of them have at this point, um, I have taken them to four years because I want them to be successful too. Um, and so we spend some time talking about what that means, work with them on setting up the appropriate date for them to, to pay uh, what they owe in arrears so that they don't default because if, if they don't pay it mm -hmm. and they don't hit the schedule then we do move in to, to take away the voucher and so we spend a lot of time talking about financial capacity what's the right date for you um, and, and so we'll see how they do um, we have one that we're dealing with and I'm going to talk high level on this one with you all and not mention names because of the, the camera that you are likely to hear about that um, has, has not in fact. And, and we, well, we've had a couple um, that we've, we've forwarded to the appropriate authorities based on fraud. So because it's federal dollars, we have a responsibility to ensure that fraud doesn't occur and you have to report it to the appropriate authorities. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of times we start with our police department, it could shift to the Office of Inspector General. We haven't had any high enough, but if it gets high enough, it'll go to the FBI. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> my last jurisdiction, we didn't really have an OIG near, so most of them went, those types of things went to the FBI. Um, we have one we're dealing with now that uh, uh, the level of, of fraud is is significant, <clears throat> even <clears throat> to the point of seeing documentation that they provided to us from other entities that it was uh, uh, altered. So um, today or tomorrow, a letter is going out from me to the individual saying, "We've reviewed it. Here's the history of your case. Um, we it appears that frauds occurred, and we're forwarding this to the appropriate authorities." Um, so if you get a frantic call, you need to call uh, Molly and myself pretty quick. 
because that may be coming up in the next week or so. But, um, but yeah, so it's it's a lot of, we're having a lot of these meetings. And you know, for the most part, I would say 85%, 90% of them are saying, yeah, I, I didn't do this. And, and what it's, what's happening is, <clears throat> so if, if I had a voucher and Molly um, was, was a roommate, I have to report Molly's income. Um, and that impacts my voucher. Um, and, and so that's where you'll see it sometimes intentional not reporting. Sometimes they just forget. And so when we meet with these individuals, we're telling them if anything changes in your income, you need to report it to us immediately. Pick up the phone and call us so we can do this. And, and so if Kendra was my kid and Lisa was my kid, and Kendra went to live with my mom in Texas, I would have to report that adjustment because that lowers the amount of money that, that we have. And, and we're seeing all of those things occur. Hmm. <clears throat> so that's just a heads up on the bad debt policy. <laughs> Whether it may, may or may not go to the board on November 1st, <laughs> but it will be updated regardless. Now let's go to number seven. Now, President Call your Blake. So for my side, I'm just just reporting on um, what we're doing based on the discussion last month with you all. So tonight, I'm just going to be giving the board um, a summary of what you discussed and how you want to move forward with um, using that survey data. Did Lauren get back to you? Lauren? She did not. So I was going to remind her. It's all right. I'm just going to give kind of the plan tonight and then provide a summary once she's able to do that. Um, so basically just summarizing our last discussion. So if there's anything you want me to add to, just let me know. But I think that's for tonight. That's all we're going to do. Well, I have a question on this. So I sent you the contract. You called me. I called you back. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard. Or are we squared away on why the contract was... So, okay. I mean, it, it, it's it's done. I think for now. I guess my biggest concern is how we're divvying up the money, based on what we had talked with him about. I guess I don't. I see a, I see a, a potential um, problem both for them or for us as far as maybe money being either overspent by somebody or, or underspent. So that's my my concern but the way it is right now we're, we're talking two months i mean we're only talking for the year yeah so i think what we did was we took your pricing mm -hmm. we multiplied your pricing times number of trips right and then we added two more trips or one, one more trip and then a little bit of cushion for overtime right? yeah and that that's how we did it and i mm -hmm. think you're right it, and we had to split it up into I wanted to just, we initially wanted to do it all one, but the contract that we're utilizing on the city side is an annual contract. Mm -hmm. And so we amended this one. The one for next year, we'll build it into it. Um, As a separate line item type thing. So that I guess we don't wanna, I guess then we talked about this is that we don't want to lose any of that money that they gave us that we want it to kind of carry forward. And it will. So the way that we work our budget, so this is city funding, it's not mm -hmm. housing authority funding. Right. So when it goes into our system, <clears throat> I asked the council, and we talked about this, to allocate enough for next year too, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because we knew this budget year was going to be tight. Um, so they allocated $40,000. Um, it could theoretically carry us if we will figure that out. But um, what happens in the budget process, that will be moved for this. Mm -hmm. And then once we get into next year, um, we will do a carryover as part of our accounting process. And, and so it will stay with it. And so we won't lose that money because it will be budgeted and the carryovers come through me. Okay. So I'll, we'll catch it. But um, in the next contract, instead of amending it, we're just going to include it in the VA contract associated with what we pay them for as part of the city and hopefully we will see in the next two months the numbers mm -hmm. to, to really inform the next contract but 
we had to split everything up just because of the nature of the contract. Right, and, and I understood that from it. I guess I, guess I just um, have been very hesitant of, of saying anything to them about the fact that we have, you know, now we've got 35,000 left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, I, I don't... I don't want anybody to look at that and say, oh, great, we could just, you know, do some wonderful thing. I, and not on our end, you know, really, maybe more on BS, because I don't know that much about them. You know, so it's, it's sort of like we're sort of kind of... Yeah, and that's why we're telling them it's, it's the number of trips that you all wanted, mm -hmm. and it's the additional trip for the holidays. And right. so they can't be a contract to go beyond that. Right. So... Yeah. But you know we've worked well with Via before, so I don't, I don't think they would do something that's not in a contract and then come back and say you owe us. I know Frank pretty well. Yeah, yeah, they they were easy to work with yep. for years. Um, uh, in terms of next year, because Lisa, you're going to be getting some good feedback on who really uses this. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. um, I'm surprised that it's going to be an all-day thing, but I guess until we get routes and whatever. Yeah, they're working on the routes. I turned yeah. that over to them yesterday but, to figure out how to. If we have some properties that really don't use it, mm -hmm. um, would that if we can use that data from now to change for next year? So yeah. not having mm -hmm. yeah. some the statement of work to work differently. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, some may only need one. Others may need three. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so we're, we're going to be learning through this. And there may be right. some properties that don't use it. And, and we may have to, in the next contract cycle, be flexible enough where we can make adjustments throughout the right. contract right. Right. based there on the usage. Look at so yeah, yeah we got to build that yeah. in for next year. Yeah. 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 Okay. And, and they're, they were open. We met with them yesterday. They were open to that. So oh, um, yeah. yeah. Have we got it back from them? No, she was checking on that yesterday because... Um, Arlene and I met with two reps from VIA, and so they were going to, because they said um, whoever it went to was yeah. really knee deep in other stuff. And yeah, because I think now stuff. we're waiting on them. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. Yeah. their goal is to have this rolled out November 1st. Because so. mm -hmm. we got it to them 1st of October. We hit our timeline yeah, yeah. in getting that, and now we're just waiting on them to get back to yeah. But I think the fact that we met with them yesterday is going to push this along because it's yeah. a better understanding of what they're expecting, what we're expecting, and, and going forward. So, and, and Tom, this is a grocery shopping thing that we're kind of trying to work out for the yeah. places here. Right? And so tomorrow they're gonna actually, be is gonna go meet with residents, do like just a 30 minute briefing of what they need to do and how this is gonna roll out. Um, so we're, we're steamrolling it to hopefully get it out November 1st, yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. Have, you, have you got tentative dates? Yes. For each month? Okay. Yes. Okay, so, that's gonna help them. Yep. Yes, so. First Tuesday November. and third Thursday, and then the 22nd, I think it was, for the mm -hmm. extra shopping trip yeah. for this year. Down to the wire. Yeah, really. Is that yeah. going to be in November or December? December. The 22nd? Yes. Okay. So, got it. Good. That'll be fun. Going on number eight, uh, LHA report, update on operations, occupancy reports. Um, so I had the occupancy report, as you can see, we did a drop to 92%, which is painful. Some of it is due to um, shortages. We, we haven't been able to get appliances, and I can't run a unit with no appliance. So mm -hmm. we, yep. I got, can't go see it on my credit card bill. I had to go to an appliance factory three times and buy four bottles to get a refrigerator and two stoves in mm -hmm. because yeah. we could not get appliances through our contractors or it's six to eight weeks out. Um, so that was part of the drop. Um, we're starting to see the, the guys have been great about getting on the unit. So those we do expect occupancy to increase. And we have two waiting lists currently open, which is Fall River and Village Place, because they have had some long-term rentals. And even with the waiting list open, we are not finding people can move for 60 to 90 days. They're not local or they're in a lease and they don't want to move until, you know. They, so it, that's the hard thing. So as we're getting people calling saying, oh, my mom wants to move now, I'm referring them straight to Village Place and Fall River trying to get those rented. Mm -hmm. So. Wow. Um, on the bottom, I've added the meth contamination units. So you'll see 7110, which was at the suites. That's a meth unit from last year that is now back online. Um, we are working to rent it. It's through um, LHA. It's an LHA unit, but 
maintenance still needs to go in and finish up some of the stuff that construction doesn't do. They don't check the drains. They're not, you know, putting the coat rod, the closet rods and stuff like that is our responsibility after them. So we are just finalizing those up and um, waiting for housing to send us somebody to put into that unit. 7114, that is a meth unit from earlier this year. It is probably about halfway through reconstruction. Um, Aspen Meadows 305, that was one hey, we were about How many MHP units do they have vacant? Right now they have, I want to say eight. I have it up here. Yeah, it's up on the top. Nine MHP units a now. So, so I had a question about that because I was wondering if, do we have a contract? With that uh, NHC on how many places that they can rent, or do we want to try to pull some of those back to, to LHA or? Um, it is their it's vouchers. NHC is the voucher holder, but they did. We do have. They have three sources they are pulling from now, and this is something Kathy worked on right before she left, because okay. before they used to just use the DOJ DOH list, mm -hmm. but now they are using um, Boulder County one home list, and then they have another list that they're using to pull. So some of these people are coming through the routes faster. They just filled two units last week through the one home list. So they have three avenues now to fill their units. Do they use a coordinated entry list? Yes, they do. All right, let's set a meeting up to talk with Alberto and do a co-op and see who's in the potentially the safe lots. And we're finding the safe lot, individuals in the safe lots. Part of the issue is they don't qualify financially. And we, we have to figure this out with Alberto. Um, they're actually able to house them in market rate housing. Um, <clears throat> so these are individuals who may have lost a job or had a health issue. They didn't get a job, and mm -hmm. so they're they're able to do it. But let's get into that because maybe we can work with Alberto to fill those spots. Yeah. Um, Three hundred five uh, Aspen Meadows. We were not expecting this to be a re reconstruction, but when we actually got into the unit two weeks ago, we noticed they had to rip out most of the bathroom and stuff like that because of the level of contamination, they could not get it clean. So we have turned that one over to the contractors. Was this the biohazard? No, this was um, the meth unit at Aspen Senior uh -oh. that this one, yeah. It's just, the good thing is we have her on a repayment agreement, so we're gonna have, we'll have that tacked on to this continuing. Um, F3, which was the meth unit from early 2021, um, that one is now completed and Corinne has moved into that as a manager's unit. She moved in on the 8th, so that one's done. Um, we have a new one over at the neighborhood B2. We've approved the RFP for cleaning and that one will be probably at least a half a gut of that unit. The living room we know and the master bedroom have to be completely gutted. The um, second bedroom had very, very low readings. And then we have a new one at Fall River that is going to be a complete gut down to the studs and then a retest to see how contaminated that unit is and possibly more. We've had to test all the units surrounding. Mm -hmm. Two units have come back, one below readable, one was below the cleaning level. The hallways 20 feet down have to be cleaned, and so we're waiting on the third unit's test results, which should be back later today. So that was so high. That was the one that was the second highest that this company's ever seen. That the Fall River. Company. Yeah, and so we rarely have to retest the studs, um, but we were afraid, and we're still afraid. It was so high that the studs will come in contaminated, and then you gotta just basically rebuild. This was an eviction that we did not even know would have less contamination until we started the clean out of the unit. Yeah. The advantage on this one is that it was that that individual was the only one that ever lived in that unit. And so we are legally uh, going and doing what we need to do to try to get that recovered as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And then we have a few others, just um, we had a biohazard um, at Fall River that's in the, um, had a rip out half the flooring in the bedroom. And so that one's being worked on right now. We have um, A4, um, it'll be rent ready next this week, later on this week, but that one was um, an eviction that they had been in there for about eight years, fish tanks full of urine, stuff like that, that just 
took maintenance a long time to okay. deal with and handle. And yeah. and then we have a suite. We have a biohazard cleanup there. Um, I should be getting that report this week of what the next steps are on that one. Yeah. <laughs> and Harold was at that eviction, so he can. <laughs> Which one, the biohazard? Yeah, at yeah. the suites. Then I've included the unit vacancy report just so you can see some of the um, vacancies and how long they have been vacant. It's the two pages and just kind of what we've been working through. Yeah. So. And Tracy is having the managers do a report too that will add to that to give us a little bit more data how many applicants, how long it's taking them. Yeah. Um, yeah. One at Spring Creek, we've had difficulty. It was a meth unit. Um, low level, didn't require any construction, and just a cleaning and maintenance to touch up, but that one's been hard to rent because residents are letting them know after we get an applicant, hey, that was a meth unit, and they're like, is that a meth unit? We have to disclose it if they ask. We let them know, yes, it was, but it's been remedied. We have all the reports. If you want to see them, then they decide not to rent. That's going to happen. Yeah. So, so the typical like move outs in that, I mean, is it taking us, I mean, like about 60 days, or like two months to rent? They have to like call wait lists and get through it. And, yeah. Okay. And people just aren't. Yeah. Not well, yeah, yeah, like you said, they yeah, not available moving. and move in. Yeah, so when the people are moving out, are they giving us 30 days notice or is it? 50 50. Some of them they go to full time care unexpectedly okay. or they have to go to rehab or. Pass away. We've had quite a few recently that have passed away where we're getting really a week notice. Yeah, so. yeah and I think, you know, then we talked about the migration and all of these other issues and because of the economic conditions. And so it's, we're really, <clears throat> you know, we keep saying perfect storm. The perfect storm keeps becoming more perfect. Yeah. And we're still dealing with supply chain, mm -hmm. you're dealing with math, now you have the economy and inflation and people moving people moving in with their families because of those issues and so it's just sort of continuing to snowball one of the things that Kendra and I did talk about is um, taking the percentages and actually um, watching them based on the actual units and what the financial impact is because smaller properties may show a, a larger percentage mm -hmm. But the financial impact may not be the same mm -hmm. as what we're seeing in others. And so we need to understand that a little bit too mm -hmm. um, as part of our budgeting process. And then in, in terms of the, um, you know, getting the refrigerators and that, do we have the capacity to say, put out order in that for six to eight weeks in a place to store it or is it? That's the hard that, part is right? honey. Um, Right now with Village Place, we've been cleaning out the storage rooms. Uh -huh. So we will have that temporarily until we start the recidication. Uh -huh. And that will give us a little bit, but oh, yeah. mm -hmm. budget capacity too that have appliances oh, on hand. Right, but, exactly. Yeah. And we were lucky for the beginning of 2022 is when Aspen Meadows did their recidication, we kept all the good fridges. We oh. kept about 12 good fridges. We, we also have a shed. <laughs> well, it's pretty full though. I Most of our sheds are. So, um, because we got all the extra flooring and yeah. cabinets, but um, mm -hmm. we took about 12 fridges from Aspen Meadow Senior and put two to three in each area's common area. There was one upstairs for a while, next door still has one. Spring Creek has one that we use as our backup even until we can get a fridge in stock if a resident's fridge goes out. So we, and some of them have just gone into units at the suites and stuff just because we had them right. to, instead of buying. Mm -hmm. So. And that's our plan with the Village Place doing the recent occasion is we want to afford some of those appliances mm -hmm. as yeah. um, spares and loaners mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So that saved us for the first part of the year. So we didn't really run into this problem until no, more recently. Yeah. 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 My credit card bill, I think, was $2,500 of appliances. <laughs> is there any way that we can rent them through a rental place or is that not even an option? And I don't even know if there's a rental place here in town. I think everybody is. I don't know. I don't know. We have it closed. Oh, it's Aaron's rental on 119 in May, and it closed. 
we would have to go through a procurement on that. Yeah. I think our goal is to build in the budget, some budget for inventory, to have things yeah. on hand so we don't have to just order as the need comes up. Right. Um, but that's going to take some time. I mean, compliance is very big. It's a big item to <laughs> yeah. but, um, but I am working with um, Efficiency Works and the city. We're going to actually have an energy consultant that they have, that they use, come out to all the properties and compare grants with what the age of some of our appliances are and see if there's grant programs to kind of help us get some. Get so, in the energy. Into the energy. Yeah, there's, there's grants and we've done it. That's how we got the lighting in here fixed finally after two years. <laughs> we have lights now. Um, it was through a grant. We got a $50,000 grant. So they did all the common area hallways and inside the unit bathrooms and then in here mm -hmm. to upgrade. And cost LA chain just Shadow like following them around and letting them in units. So, so these are the new lights. These are the new lights. <laughs> We're not sitting in the dark. Yeah. <laughs> We're having the, the lamps on around here, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go on to property updates. So um, I've been able to start. I've actually with hiring staff. I've been able to start my quarterly management walks where I walk with maintenance and we go through every nook and cranny of the complete building. I was on the roof here last week um, looking for stuff that auditors will look at, inspectors will look at, things that maybe my staff walk by every day and they might not notice it. So and we generate a list and I send it back out with them. Health and safety items, they have 24 hours to correct. Kind of just going through a very detailed inspection. Um, it's putting my eyes on stuff that we need to start planning on for next year. And so then I gave Kendra a list of items that we would like to put in the budget that these properties um, could use too. For example, here, if you go up to their common area on the second floor and sit in one of the lounge chairs outside, you'll end up on the ground. Um, so we need to start working on different things like that, things that have been neglected over the years. So we are doing that um, quarterly now, and it's on my schedule for the next year already. Um, our lease is under review um, with a second attorney now. We should be getting that back this week. We're the, we already talked about VIA, um, and we're actually partnered with Boulder County Health, Public Health. We're doing COVID and flu vaccinations on all the sites. Today is Aspen Meadows Senior, so they will vaccinate all the residents um, if they want any one of their boosters or even just start the COVID shots and do the flu shots for the um, high risk. Do they have a um, Moderna? I believe so. <clears throat> Someone was asking me from the community, and I, I sent them to Boulder County. Yeah, so that's what they had last week at Village Place. They had the Minerva. So, mm -hmm. so going through the suites, um, MHEG, which is the investor for the suites, was out and they did um, property tour and inspection. <coughs> they said it was they were happy with the overall look of the suites and said um, the files look great, best that they've seen there in years. So we were pretty proud of that. Um, the calls for service is still remaining low from public safety. Um, we have two evictions that have been granted by the courts and are pending lockout for later this month, next month. <laughs> and um, had a Chaffa audit on the 22nd. Um, they were also impressed with the files and how easy we had very, very minor um, things to go back, by minor findings. Some of it was maybe a document was missing from 2019, 2020, so we just had to do a true and correct and place it in the file. Um, no, no over incomes, no other issues that they saw. So, on those evictions, is that all uh, based on um, prior payments? Like, um, one of them is one that actually um, is a fraud and um, non payment of rent, a lot of issues going on there. So, that was actually been turned over to uh, in addition to um, investigate, and then the other one is for criminal activity, and residents have been incarcerated for quite a few months, and non-payment of rent. I'm sorry, I'm standing on my back. Yeah, you're um, fine. <laughs> the, the majority of, I mean, I would say that um, in terms of non-payment, that's probably the outlier on our evictions. Mm -hmm. It's it's normally um, behavior, other types of issues that are driving most of the evictions that we go through. I mean, I can think of maybe what, 
two or three. Yeah, we have just a few, and they had other yeah. other issues. So when we look at it with our attorney, we different power room, and what's the easiest way? What's um, will get us the end result, mm -hmm. the best way without having to go to trial and incur more cost. So some of these, though, we're, we're evicting them for non-payment. They have a other issues, it's just easier for both cases to just do it that way. Um, Aspen Senior had a Chaffa audit. Um, minor findings have already been corrected. RBG audit um, scheduled for September 20th. Um, we're still getting the outcome of that one, but we expect no issues because they did audit, do a full audit last year. Um, she touched on the flooring issues that we are handling or working through. and. Um, I am working with Palace Construction as I did my um, first detailed walk of that property. We noticed some um, deficiencies or things that weren't holding up. And so Carrie from Palace came out and walked with me and we, um, boards that were supposed to be cedar around the trash enclosure do not appear to be cedar and already breaking. So she is addressing it with them. A um, few areas where the brick stain is, looks to be failing or maybe wasn't um, sealed properly. So they're going to work on that. And the, some of the furniture, outdoor furniture upstairs, is not holding up. <coughs> Aspen Meadows neighborhood, only thing going on is the meth unit, and Corinne has moved over there now, so she will have more of a presence, presence there because we've been having, um, they, they fluctuate on their calls for service at the neighborhood um, a lot more. It's full of family, so we have a lot more domestic and other nuisance calls, so I think having her presence there and her walking it will bring those down as well. Um, 615 Main, we have confirmed that this project is not tied to Village Place, so we are working through that process to see what the next steps are to sell it, rent it, what we're going to do. So we're um, trying to access the city contracts for, they've got um, on-call services for somebody that could do a market analysis, not a, you know, something kind of low level, here's what a fair market value would be, or, you know, that to guide our negotiations on selling that property. Mm -hmm. But I need to tap up on that because they haven't responded, I just realized. So, um, but we need to tap up on it because the CPWG will be, we have to address their lease, mm -hmm. the timing, so. Then what, how much is the investor owed on that property then too, or are they, that That's what we're we're, we're having a conversation this afternoon. Um, well, we've been working on it in, on our side, but we're approaching them today to just see what the options look like. So I don't know if you talk to them. That's what's in flux. It depends on which option we choose. In the village place, one of our plans for this year, um, this month is to repaint the whole entryway and get rid of that brown color that everybody hates and it was vocalized at the advisory board meeting. Um, so we, the residents voted and they selected um, the trim color and the base color that will go on all the pillars and just the entryway. So Dave's going to um, work on that towards the end of the month. We had this MOR audit here thrown at us, so he, that is his focus right now, but after that he will be painting. Um, it's a bluish gray. We had we started out with about ten colors, narrowed it down to some grays and blues, and then they voted. And it actually, we had about over half the community vote on their paint color. So, yeah, that's good. So I hope, I hope the uh, architecture doesn't plan on changing that color. No, well, they know this is temporary. Okay, yeah, so they it. know this is temporary just to um, kind of make it fresh. It goes with the mm -hmm. carpet and okay. um, isn't dated. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> And we had a coffee and conversations with Harold there. Um, <laughs> Katie provided them a great update of the recent occasion in the process, so I think they kind of know where the next steps lie. Um, and what our minor, we're going to start on our end, the management side, minor, minor steps to get ready for it. So some of this will be, um, I'm working with a couple different entities about the commercial kitchen equipment. If we can sell it, if it just needs to be donated, what, get some more usable items in there, and then getting rid of the stuff that was from when, before Village Place when it was, I guess, they did meal preps, there's tons of dishes that aren't even utilized in there, and um, start donating those out. Mm -hmm. Can't be bowls for another. Bowls? Yeah, we could use some bowls if that's from there. Okay, we got a bunch from sweets, but mm -hmm. <laughs> when we, yeah. Um, Spring Creek, um, they still have quite a few groups. Um, they, they've done their, they've really, 
gotten back together since COVID. They have their crafts. I just ordered them $300 in craft supplies. They sent me a long list. They all voted on, signed off on it. Um, they got their chair, Taekwondo, the every Tuesday in the common areas. Very active up there. Um, the residents there have been really good about initiating um, conversations with me and um, the manager about important issues to them. Like, um, they know the property's been neglected, and so they really want, like, new rocks, get rid of the mulch and do the rocks. They really, um, kind of think. They have horseshoe pits that are, haven't been utilized since the property was built. Now they're turning in mosquito ponds and all that. Mm -hmm. So with that, we actually have um, Scott, who does our newsletters for LHA. His son's a Boy Scout and needs to do an Eagle Scout project. So I had a meeting with him, and they're proposing it to the Boy Scouts to come in. Chaff has already approved that the horseshoe pits could be turned into raised garden beds. So the Boy Scouts are going to put together a whole plan on how they can do that awesome. by the um, by the first of spring to have raised garden beds more utilized by the residents. And then they're going to look into, they have a couple guys who need to do their Eagle Scout project. So they're all going to look at some of our properties and see what they can do. And because they have the fundraise and everything else. So this, I think, will be a great, not just for the residents, the Boy Scouts, but great partnerships are out. Yeah. Um, we had an eviction on September 1st um, that resulted in that meth unit that we were talking about. Um, that was a huge thing, a huge task on my staff. I'm super proud of them for handling it. It was a hoarding unit. Uh, it took us an hour and a half to get through just the kitchen into the living room. Yeah. Um, the sheriff was very kind and gave us an extra hour above our two hour limit. Um, but we did turn everything over to the police during that eviction um, and then Thank you, Harold. He had the city come in and pick up everything that was left afterwards. Okay, two truck. <laughs> two dump trucks. And that was after he, the resident took a U-Haul. And, and the police was out there as well. They, they, uh, the day before, uh, they did cite them for criminal violations as part of that eviction. Um, and then they were out the following day to ensure that everything went well. We had. We thought we were going to have some issues with friends, and they were out there earlier. Mm -hmm. um, but then when we came out, they weren't there. And he showed up and was kind of moving pretty aggressive until he saw the police there. And so, um, really good partnership with public safety. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Heartstone and Lodge, we have the MOR audit here that we're getting ready for. That will be next week, Monday and Wednesday. Um, but the residents here are now utilizing this room again now that we have the lights working. So they are, they're having their birthday parties and crafts and everything going on here. Um, we did ask for the lodge for a rental increase. And that's what Tanya talked about earlier. We're waiting for them to kind of go through it. <laughs> yeah. Um, we haven't heard back for the Heartstone, but I imagine he's going to push. He did say he was going to push for the Heartstone because um, they, they, when they came in and were looking at the financials, the financials were not great. As you know, we weren't able to pay bills. Um, so he did say that he's going to push for the Heartstone to get increased because they're really kind of the same properties, have the same amount of units, mm -hmm. but the lodge is getting much more rent than the Heartstone is. Um, and he could obviously see that cash was, was cash flow was not good <laughs> it's gotten much better um just with what we've enacted but um if we don't get what we say we need it's it's gonna be and that's the one that i think i asked 10 percent, and the launch was eight um so he did say he was gonna push for dark so for sure get them up. then at the lodge um we have been dealing with a bed bug issue i believe we capped it at four to five units. A couple of those units have been completely rem remedied. Um, we had an eviction for one of them. Um, if you see the giant storage container in the corner, that is housing stuff, <laughs> items. Um, no new units, I believe, have been reported. Um, we are following the state guidelines. We had the pest control company come in and do presentations at this property and next door of what to look for, signs. Um, they've put traps out. If somebody thinks they might have them, but they, they're not visible to us, we're putting um, little traps and everything, well, the main um, pest control is, to kind of monitor those units. When we have a unit that we're notified is contaminated or has the little pest in there, 
We are inspecting every unit around them as well, mm -hmm. as for Colorado. Um, it looks like some of these units have had them for quite a while, and it's not that they just popped up in the last month or two, it's that they, they had been there and just failed to report. So it's been fun. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a way with our pest control contract we can look at just putting these traps in units and just check them on an ongoing basis? They are, avoid that? they are looking at what it would cost to go into units monthly um, and do some other stuff because okay. we don't we have a contract but we don't we do need to go out for RFP for pest control because this was a contract with another company that they bought out and so they don't even have the original contract either. Um, our open positions, we have actually been filling some, so I've filled one of my assistant manager positions and I have one still open. Um, we are still looking for the building attendance for the suites. We have one full-time and two part-time. Our custodian position has been filled with an anticipated start date of next Monday. We filled the housing choice voucher program position was filled and she actually started yesterday. And our new admin position has been filled as well. So that's the first time we've had ad specific admin support for LHA for, for some time, about a year. About a year. Um, and so she's really helping help us with, especially lock-up folks that we really needed more help with. But also she's a really good point of contact for to distribute, which is also really good. So we're excited. Issuance, or is that going to be Should quarterly? Should we move back to quarterly too? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah. that's what I was going to say. Anything else? So next month. Yeah, anything else, Carol? You need to update this one? Nope. Okay. Any other business? Okay. All right, so let's adjourn the meeting at 10 52. That's good.